Okay, how's it, Oaks? So today we're doing a conversion on one of these crampy big Perigos. It's normally uh, six volts, and it literally runs at like a snail's pace. I've done two conversions on these before. You can do a 12 volt conversion or you can do a 24 volt conversion. The 24 volt conversion doesn't last long because then you normally stuff up the the motor itself. Because the motor is actually a variable speed motor, it's very small. But uh, I think today we're going to convert it to 12 volts. So I'll show you, I've already butchered here. We're starting with a conversion here, bro. There you can see. What I've done is I've cut this whole battery box out. It's gonna come out now. There's the old crappy battery. And you can see we've got a nice deep harness there. We can put two, three, four batteries in there. Uh, there's the six volt battery that I've just pulled out. Okay, so that's coming out there. We're gonna keep all the connectors. Here's the old charger. I've just cut the cable off. There's the cable from the charger. Okay. Cut it off, and we're going to hook it straight up to a 12 volt charger. And uh, we're going to be putting two 12 volts in instead of one crappy 6 volt. So we're going to drop those two 8, uh, eight hour, amp hour batteries in, and then we're going to see how this puppy runs. She's going to go a little bit faster than she did before, and she's going to have four times more endurance because I think that that 6 volts only a, I think a 4 or 5 amp hour. These are eight, so we're going to have 16 amp hours on those, and they're going in there. So, yeah. Okay, so we're carrying on in here. Obviously, the first ingredient to any successful conversion is a nice half litre of pranas, and then a multimeter, long nose pliers, so you can cut everything off you don't need, and a new 12 volt power supply. Uh, what we're also going to do is, because we're putting the 12 volt batteries in, we're going to put a switch in and we're going to run a few small LED strips, okay, they're quite potent, if you have a look how they run here, dim the lights bro, and then we'll check. So we're going to do a full conversion on that little bike and really turn it into something cool. So switch the lights off quickly. You can see how nice and bright this is. See? Just something for the lighties, you know, to keep them happy. But yeah, so most important ingredient is call yourself a branas, relax and work with your hands. These days there's too many professionals that don't work with their hands anymore. So get to know your hands a bit better and start doing stuff around your house. Okay, so I'm the king of amateur hour. I take a normal battery charger and I just wire up a whole lot of lugs together so I can charge my 12 volt batteries all at once. As everyone knows, the load shedding is bad. We need to back up our cameras, our CCTV, things like that. Often you'll find now, like I've just cut two pieces off that I'm going to use on this conversion. One of my lugs has actually stayed behind on the battery. It's a normal problem if you're not crimping your lugs properly. So you can see the lot the lugs stayed behind and the wire is just protruding there. So that's why a long nose is always probably your best pair of set of plies you can ever have. We might need to put a brand new lug on here because this one has been crimped. But obviously I was too lazy to use a proper crimping tool. And we're going to put this one back on here if we can. If we can't, we just get a new lug. It's not the end of the world. The most important thing is that you've got a good connection. And uh, crimp your lugs properly. So now I'm going to try and crimp it again. Using a side cut is a little bit of a shortcut. So. Okay, so the most important thing about being a DIY guy 
is having all the stuff you need. Every now and then you've got to use a second hand lug. Nothing wrong with that. Just make sure it works. Crimp it now. Use the right crimping tool. Unfortunately, theft is rampant, as most people would know. So I'm going to try with the crimping pliers. So just going to use a big pair of pliers here and crimp it once. And there you go. Feel nice and tight now. Good. Okay, so now we've made our two sets of leads for the two batteries, which will be running in series, as you can see. We've got the negatives in blue, positives in red, and then one terminal for each. So we're going to be running the two 12 volt bar, two 12 volt batteries alongside in series, which is going to give us 16 amp hours on the two batteries. Okay, so as I mentioned previously, running one 6 volt piece of crap battery. Now we're going to be running two 12 volt amp hours. So instead of sitting on, let's have a look at what that battery was sitting on. Previously we were sitting on, I don't know if you can see it, 6.3 volts and now we're going to be running around 13. And we're putting two batteries in series so we're going to have 16 amp hours instead of 8. Whereas we had previously 5 or 6 amp hours on the 6 volt battery. We're going to be basically having double the endurance and double the power. So I'm going to carry on working, pause the recording now, and then uh, you'll see the end product, also with the LEDs on. Okay guys, so I'm just going to give you an interior view of the bike. Okay, so these two wires here are running to your motor, which sits at the back there. I don't know if you can see it like that. Okay, and then those three wires there are obviously just your switch, which is your pedal. So that's opening and closing the circuit. So the none of the power plugs change. We keep all the power plugs the same. It's just the voltage that is going to be changing. So like I said before, here's the, your old power supply. You can see there, 6 volts. Okay, all I've done is cut the cable. There, this came from the charger before, and this cable was tied in obviously to the back there. So all we're doing is we changing the input current and the output current to from 6 volts to 12 volts. So this we are going to tie into the two 12 volt batteries that are going to be connected here. So I'll go through that a little bit later as well. Okay, Eric, so... I'm going to try and do it as easily as I can. There you can see, if it zooms in correctly, the positive and the negative. So just make sure you wire them up correctly. The two negatives, which are the two blue terminals, will go onto the battery, onto the negative of the battery. And the other side here, I'm just still busy insulating it, with the two positives, will go onto the two positives of the battery. Okay, Eric, so we finished to hook up our terminal there that goes to the Bearcat Peg Perego. As I said, we're keeping the two negatives together and the two positives together. So we're not connecting in parallel, we're connecting in series. Here's our power pack, so we can open the batteries up, take the lugs off, uh, the plastic lugs off the lugs, 
and connect up as we said and then we're going to take the multimeter nice and strong and we're going to make sure that we've connected them up correctly okay Okay. Give you a nice little close up view here. Okay, so you can see exactly what's going on. Negative, negative, positive, positive. And now we're going to measure this with a multimeter to make sure we've done it correctly. Always make sure you know how to use a multimeter. A lot of people are a little bit off. When you're measuring batteries, it's always direct current. That is AC, that is DC. Okay. I'm going to pop it here so you can see. And now I'm going to measure my green connector where it says negative and positive. So obviously the negative is here. I'm just going to push that probe in there. The positive is here. We should get around 12, 13 volts. Okay, and we are getting 12.7, 12.97, sorry. Okay, and there you go. So now we know we've wired that up correctly, we can move on to installing it into the actual bear cub. Okay, so it looks like we've got a successful installation. We popped the two batteries in. They're a little bit loose, but I don't think they're going to jump around too much. If you really want to, you can probably cable tie them in nicely. I've let them rest on top of the two cables that run straight to the motor there at the back that we spoke about. And uh, we haven't changed anything. So all the wiring stays the same. Everything is basically staying exactly the same. The only thing we're doing is changing the voltage. So let's give it a quick test. See if it works. Okay. It's a lot more powerful now. Now we're going to take it one step further and we're going to add a LED light to this cable here which is going to be activated when the children basically climb on and start riding now if we want to so i think it will only work when we activate this trigger here okay so that if they climb on the bike the lights come on if they're not on the bike the lights don't come on because you don't want the lights on the whole time because then it drains the batteries. So we're going to have a pause again. And then I'll come back once I've put the LEDs on. We're probably going to run them on the front here. So that the kid can see where he's going at night. And we might run them on the back here as well. But yeah, this conversion is going to come out pretty cool. Okay, Oak, so I've designed a little headlight. It's cheap. Won't cost you much. 12 volt LED. Uh, 5 watt LED or 4 watt LED what I've done is I've taken normal twin flex okay I've connected it directly I've actually pushed the prongs I used the long nose plier to hold the prongs there I've actually slid it over remember it's 12 volts so it's only live and neutral it's not your live earth and neutral next key ingredient Q-Bond bicarbonate of soda and all I'm going to do is I'm going to super glue those onto there. And then I've already marked my positive and negative. Negative for me has always got a knot in it. Okay. So as you push the pedal on the bike. Sorry. As you push the pedal on, on the bike. It will engage power onto the headlight. Which is this little 4 or 5 watt LED. And also I've put a little flashing unit at the back here, which will engage that. So only when the kid gets on the bike and touches the pedal, it engages power to the flashing rear light, which will, it, it's, a, it's also an LED, but it's got a small PC board inside. So it flashes, so anyone driving around will see, definitely see this little vehicle. And he's got his own little headlights as well that will light up the road for him. So... I'll quickly pause again and then we'll come back to this afterwards. Okay guys, as I said before, trick with um, Q-Bond and bicarbonate of soda. Tap it on to whatever you want to 
chemically seal and then you add your cube on you can actually see the smoke coming off there it's so potent and this will not only waterproof but this will basically chemically seal any joint that you've created and it costs next to nothing to do that so there you can see here we're dropping a little bit more on there oh burns the eyes there now it's recording see the time now press pause oh ah, okay okay so i've rather used the chocolate box on this connector here for all the lights okay so when you hit the throttle the strobe comes on and the headlight so we're just going to put the seat back on now and then Nikki's going to do the test drive for us nice and neat 212 volts instead of 16 volt awesome stuff man yeah because it's too fast now <laughs> whoa is that awesome yeah no you can put it in reverse look it's got a reverse bro Is it cool? Okay, go. Okay, just turn go, it there, bro. Go now. Go forward. Okay, then you must go first. There. Okay, go. Yes, and it's Strobies. Press. It just mounted too high. <laughs> okay, wait. Let me pause you. Okay, go for it, dude. Okay, Chris, take it some of us and it light up it and get it. And it's now flipping potent. So I see it for light. And it gets also strobe after it sit. So the light that comes on as you ride, you can see how fun it is to be now. And it is strobe, so it's fine. Okay, go, 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 go. I got him to mess. Awesome. 